When I met you. When, when and you toured through? <laughs> I'm not sure that I ever, ever stayed to hear anybody speak, but I had a chance to do otherwise. But it wasn't a command to yeah. so, uh, Especially when you're young, you want to. Yeah, energetic. So any, anyone who uh, shows up certainly should get a, an extra grade <laughs> above what they I'm sure they will.
Please be seated. Welcome to Salt Lake Community College and to our first annual fall convocation. Please join me in thanking one more time our student jazz ensemble who played the prelude music and the bagpipers who accompanied the processional. They've provided a great beginning. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our distinguished platform guests. We appreciate their accepting our invitation to participate with us today in the beginning of this new tradition. 
please hold your applause until I have uh, completed the introduction of all guests. And I would ask each uh, guest as he or she is being introduced to rise so they may be recognized. Beginning on my left on the first row, Dave Carlson. Uh, we welcome Dave back with us after his tragic accident, our student body president. Mark Fisher, our student body vice president. Dr. Frank Budd, president of Salt Lake Community College. Mr. John M. Huntsman, who will be introduced in a few minutes. Regent Karen Huntsman, Utah State Board of Regents. Ms. Melody Lambert, President of Salt Lake Community College Faculty Senate. On the second row, Ms. Jerry McDonald, a Salt Lake Community College faculty member. Mr. Bob Canton Wine today. We continue that tradition of excellence under the able leadership of Dr. Frank Budd. Although different in many characteristics, these men share a deeply felt value and belief. The value for and belief in great teaching. That this community college embodies the very hallmark of the entire community college movement in America. Excellence in classroom teaching. This community college provides an atmosphere where students learn first annual fall convocation. The planning, prepara preparation, and realization has occurred as a result of a coming together, a convocation, if you will, of students, faculty, and administration of this fine college. It seems fitting that we join together in the shadows of the construction of our new library a universal symbol of learning to celebrate and to honor both teaching excellence and student learning as we begin a new academic year. It gives me great pleasure also to announce a second new tradition for Salt Lake Community College. A distinguished teacher lecture series will begin this year. The lecture series will also be a collaborative effort of the college community. The Faculty Senate, in their retreat last week, expressed informal support for the idea. The student leaders want to participate. President Budd is an enthusiastic supporter of the idea. Student and faculty leaders, the Academic Vice President and the Student Services Vice President, will form a task force to develop guidelines and plans to implement the Distinguished Faculty Lecture Series. You will be asked soon to nominate a colleague to help on this important task force. You will be asked... The concept of convocation is tradition. It is a calling together of scholars, educators, and students to discuss matters of interest and importance to the educational community. Today, we, the faculty, staff, and students of Salt Lake Community College, initiate this as a new tradition for our great college. Salt Lake Community College is truly a college on the move. As the fastest growing institution within higher education in the state of Utah, we will serve over 27,000 people this year. This includes students seeking college credit in vocational, general, and transfer education. It includes employees of over 650 businesses and industrial entities within the valley and it includes contract education, short-term intensive training, custom fit for industry, and applied technology center opportunities for high school and adult students. Our students range in age from young teenagers to those well beyond retirement age. Over half of our student body is female, and most of our students work while attending school. We are among the leaders in the state in promoting diversity in our faculty, staff, and our student body. We are the People's College. In his recent book, On Cue, The Causing of Quality in Higher Education, Daniel Seymour points to the philosopher Kierkegaard's definition of the immediate men. These are the individuals who tranquilize themselves with the trivial so that they can lead normal, unencumbered lives. For these people, it is too uncomfortable to ask difficult questions, to tackle tough problems, and accept challenge as opportunity. Rather, they avoid doubt and uncertainty and keep a narrow focus on the small problems of life. They take the easy path. 
We as educators, we as leaders in a profession that uses ideas, knowledge, and discourse as the substance of our profession, and you as students can ill afford to take such a path. For those of us here at this college, growth, rapid change, and funding challenges can easily blur our real mission. Our mission is much greater than registering as many students as the computers will handle. It is much greater than balancing budgets. Of course, these tasks must be accomplished if we are to proceed and go forward in our direction. But they do not constitute our mission, our business, nor our value system. Our real mission is to provide quality, quality teaching and quality learning experiences for our students. Yes, we must think of new and creative ways to accept as many students as our resources will allow. But we cannot forget that students who come to us deserve a meaningful, useful experience, and that is our real challenge. Throughout this year, we will be meeting as a college family to discuss and plan appropriate ways to identify and measure the quality environment of this college. Within this context, we must believe we are a quality place and that our students are receiving an appropriate education. Then we need to acknowledge appropriate accountability to those outside of the institution. We must be prepared to demonstrate our quality. And you, who are students here, must believe and advocate that you are part of a quality enterprise. You must feel this will be our challenge for the coming year. I welcome each of you to this great college and to the beginning of a new academic year. I hope it is a year which will make a positive change in your life forever. Thank you.
like having a good smile. It is important to have goals in this life. Without them, your life wouldn't have much direction. For example, I was in the hospital, and I still am. I've been there for nine weeks. It has been my goal for a while to come out here and to talk today. Without that goal, I wouldn't have been able to address you because I haven't even had a voice until last week. Um, my talk is about goals. I'd like to say to learn to set them, then work to accomplish and then achieve them. Without goals, there wouldn't be much to aim for. Some of the goals I've set are hard, and are first. Or my first goal is to get better. When you set goals, you have to prioritize them. It is important because some, ex some, for example, are more pressing than others. Let me tell you, I didn't get. I didn't think. I, I didn't think correctly. How could I expect to get a job? I'd be required to think about a lot of problems and solving them. It's important for you to know that one of my accomplished goals, first prioritized goals, is to get better so that I can accomplish my other goals. For example, I would like to graduate from Salt Lake Community College and go on and finish all my schooling. I'd like to get married and provide for my family. I want to be an example for my family and friends. They have done a lot for me already just by their support. I'd like to introduce you to my supporters up here. Okay, this one is my nurse on my left. Her name's Lori and Lisa. Sorry about that, Lisa. I'm kind of nervous up here. It's a big crowd. If some of you turn around in the front row, you can see. You know, back there, it's kind of nerve wracking. And there's my mom right here. And this is my vice president, Mark Fisher. And he's going to address you in a minute. It's okay with you guys. I want to return the favor by reaching my goals. I have other goals to reach that are important. And it's important that I strive to meet all my goals. Otherwise, life doesn't mean much to me. I would like to thank you for all coming out today to hear my talk. Non-members of this school and everything. Um, I hope it has influenced you and inspired you to set some goals for yourselves. One of the goals that you guys should probably set is to continue the tradition of excellence at Solid Community College. Um, now I'd like to have my Vice President, Mark Fisher, talk to address you. What he has to say is important, so be sure you pay attention. It's worth your time. Thank you for coming. For taking part in today's conversation. I'd like to thank those up here who helped me too. Is that alright? I'd like to take just a few moments. Uh, yesterday when I went to speak with Dave, finalize everything. He told me he was going to speak for 10 minutes. I told him we only had five, so he had to cut it down. But I, we're more than happy that Dave has been able to make it this far. Um, Dave, as Dave spoke about, I would also like to speak about setting goals. I, I just wanted to build on what Dave had to say. Dave has been a great example for me and I hope for everybody that attends this institution. Dave has uh, overcome huge barriers to be here today, and it was all because he set goals to be here. He wanted to be here, he loved Salt Lake Community College, and he loved serving the students as our student body president. Uh, one thing that I'd like to say shortly is that um, this sometimes uh, education gets very hard, and things don't go exactly the way that we like them to go. But we realize that it's the most important factor that we have here. Education is empowerment. We, the students, now need to buckle down, do what we have to do, make the sacrifice to gain an education, to become educated so that we can make America a better place. This is a strong country, and we need our students and everybody else's students to make the difference, to make the change for the future, to make this a better country, even for our children. Thank you for your time.
Judd told me I had only three minutes, and I don't know whether to complain or not, but uh, I'm going to add a fourth minute to my three planned ones by digressing and saying something to David. Uh, several years ago, a young friend of mine was injured in a terrible car accident in Heber. When Bernie came to, he was a C4 quadriplegic. That means nothing moves from the fourth vertebrae down. It's a long stint in my business classes, and I want you to know that next year he will graduate from law school, sitting in a wheelchair, but with that kind of accomplishment behind him over this many years. So, David, I have full confidence that you will achieve your goals, and I hope that by relating Bernie's story briefly, many of you understand that this college is about many things not just uh, faculty, not just students, don't be deceived by appearances. On our tendency to see and hear what we want to see and hear and not to seek soundness and substance. Acknowledge the limits of your own knowledge. As Richard Paul has said, don't confuse fervent belief with knowledge or proof, emotionally held opinions with conviction, stubbornness with determination, judgmentalism with judgment, or point of view with reality. At the same time, Remember the blind man and the elephant. One held the trunk and so thought the elephant like a hose. One held the tail and so thought the elephant like a rope. One touched the leg and so thought the elephant like a tree. One touched the side and so thought the elephant like a tree. Traffic is so heavy and my bones to sit to. It's wonderful to have our more sedate students perform, isn't it? It's just great to have our students performing. I think that's wonderful. Rebuilding the country of Armenia after the 1988 earthquake occurred, which earned the country's 
highest award, the Medal of Honor, presented to him by the Republic's Prime Minister. He's very recently returned from a, a very interesting trip. 18 days gone, 15 countries visited. Perhaps more important than all of these things to John is his family. His dear wife, Karen, who is on the stand with us this morning as a member of the Utah State Higher Education Board of Regents, and their nine children. I know that in his, in his order of priorities, this is his first priority. He's a great contributor. He's a great person. We're honored to have him with us today. Please join me in welcoming John M. Huntsman. It's a great privilege to be with you as I acknowledge the faculty and uh, our distinguished platform guests, David, your remarkable address, your gifted leadership, and Mark, your thoughtfulness as the vice president of this student body. You've been an inspiration to us today. David, I must say that in my recent tour of 15 countries, I'm not sure that I have been inspired as much as I have in the last hour by being here with you. And I thank you for that. And I tell you how overwhelmed I am with this great campus. You have a magnificent quality school. A beautiful, beautiful spot. And as I watch the faculty march uh, down to take their seats here today, I recognize many of them as leaders in our community. Pillars, great leaders, gifted and talented people. I'm just overwhelmed by see pennies in the evenings and then afterwards would clean a meat market at night to help my father get through graduate school. During those years, they were difficult years. We were living in a $45 a month student housing and I had one shirt to my name. And that was my high school. People often say, John Huntsman, you come from a lot of wealth and affluence. How do you I'm very grateful and very appreciative for the opportunities that have befallen our family? When we decided to start our business, everyone said, no, don't do it. Because you see, the timing is never right to start a business. The timing is never right to go back to school. The time is never right to start your own person's yes. Whenever you hear the term no, you must in your mind just mentally say, this really means yes because there's an opportunity here. And as David got up to speak today, I thought, David, of how many times people had probably said no to you. And yet you were here because you wanted to be here. And it was important for you to be here. We started our businesses, and I made Karen a pledge that if ever we were successful, and nine out of 10 businesses fail, we would keep two things foremost in mind. Number one, we would give back to society that which it had given us. And number two, we would build our business around quality and excellence. We would never settle for second best. Our research laboratory consisted of Karen at home with a washing machine, a dishwasher, thank you. And as I would produce products, Karen would test them out and see if they passed the rinse cycle. If these products, I would tell our production people, proceed to produce the products. They've passed our R&D department head. <laughs> little by little, and I thought that was terrific because it was a remarkable test. Little by little, we would move on and eventually build a business that today has 38 facilities, some diversity, and there is nothing we can do to stop it. The only thing that we can do is be big enough and strong enough to overcome it, and then not carry that baggage around with us, not let it be known that we stumbled or fell or had a problem. I was diagnosed last year with cancer. You see, that have lived in a communist for the past 70 years. They had never been called together as a group of employees. They were leery. They, fear was in their eyes. They were trembling. They were concerned. 
there was seemed to be a certain darkness about uh, life. I want to commend you. I want to thank you. I want to tell you that you're my friends and that I hold you in great affection and that you're good people and that you have a wonderful future. Tears came down their eyes. They'd never been told even whatever we do in life, whatever field you major in, whatever subject you teach, whatever occupation you possess, the people could pull you out and say, this person is quality. They're made of excellence. I want to be with them. I respect them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Hudson. Thank you, Dave Carlson. We've been given uh, great challenges today to set our sights even higher, to strive for greater quality, and, and so let's join, us, join them there. Uh, we will now conclude our convocation with Glenn Slight singing the national anthem. He will be accompanied by Jenny Bennett. Please arise for the national anthem. Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner